At this point, we have our original table view controller full of pictures to select, plus a detailed view controller in our storyboard. The next goal is to show the detail screen when any table row is tapped and have it show the selected image. To make this work, we need to add another specially named method to view controller. This one's called table view did select row at, which takes an index path value just like self row at that tells what row we're working with. This time, we need to do a bit more work. First, we need to create a property in detail view controller that will hold the name of the image to load. Second, we'll implement the did select row at method so it loads a detail view controller from the storyboard. And finally, we'll fill in view did load inside detail view controller so it loads an image into its image view based on the name we set earlier. Let's solve each of those in order, starting with the first one, creating a property in detail view controller that will hold the name of the image to load. This property will be a string, the name of the image to load, but it needs to be an optional string because when the view controller is first created, it won't exist. Now we know we'll be setting it straight away, but it still starts off life empty. So I'll open detailviewcontroller.swift and below the image view, I'll add this line of code. var selected image is an optional string. That's the first task done. So on to the second, implementing did select row at so it loads a detail view controller from a storyboard. When we created the detail view controller, we gave it the storyboard ID detail, which allows us to load it from the storyboard using a method called instantiate view controller with identifier. Every view controller has a property called storyboard that's either the storyboard it was loaded from or nil if you aren't using storyboards. In the case of view controller, it will be main.storyboard, which is the same storyboard that contains our detail view controller. So we'll be loading from there. We can break this task down into three smaller tasks, two of which are new. First, we'll load the detail view controller from our storyboard. Second, we'll set its selected image property to be the correct item from the pictures array. And third, show the new view controller. The first of those is done by calling instantiate view controller, but it has two small complexities. First, we call on the storyboard property that we get from Apple's UI view controller type but it's optional because Swift doesn't know it came from a storyboard. So we have to use optional chaining, just like we're using with a text table of our cell. Try doing this, but do nothing if there's a problem. Second, even though instantiate view controller will send us back a detailed view controller if everything worked correctly, Swift thinks it will return back a UI view controller because it can't see inside the storyboard to know what's what. This will seem confusing if you're quite new to programming. So let me try to explain using an analogy. Let's say you want to go out on a date tonight, so you ask me to arrange a couple of tickets to an event. I go off, find tickets, then hand them to you in an envelope. I fulfilled my part of the deal. You asked tickets, I got you tickets. But what tickets are they? Tickets for a sporting event, tickets for an opera, train tickets. The only way for you to know is to open the envelope and look. Swift has the same problem. Instantiate view controller has the return type UI view controller. So as far as Swift is concerned, any view controller created with it is actually just a UI view controller. This causes a problem for us because we want to adjust the property we just made in detail view controller. The solution, we need to tell Swift that what it has is not what it thinks it is, which is of course typecasting. Once we have a detail view controller on our hands, we can set its selected image property to be equal to pictures index path dot row just like we are doing in self row at. That's the easy bit. The third mini step is to make the new screen show itself. You already saw that view controllers have an optional storyboard property that either contains a storyboard they're loaded with or nil. While well, they also have an optional navigation controller property that controls the navigation controller that they are inside if it exists or nil otherwise. This is perfect for us because navigation controllers are responsible for showing screens. Sure, they provide that nice gray bar across the top you see in lots of apps, but they're also responsible for maintaining a big stack of screens that users navigate through. By default, they contain the first view controller you created for them in the storyboard. When new screens are created, you can push them onto the navigation controller's stack to have them slide in smoothly, just like you see in settings. As more screens are pushed on, they just keep sliding in. And when users go back a screen, by tapping back or swiping left to right, the navigation controller will automatically destroy the old view controller and free up its memory. Those three mini steps complete the new method, so it's time for the code. I'll go ahead and open up viewcontroller.swift 
Uh, make some space for low, sell for row at. Hide this bar on the right to make more space perhaps. And it's called did select row at. Again, use code completion to fill it in. We'll start by calling instantiate view controller. So we'll say if let VC equals storyboard optional training dot instantiate view controller with identifier. And we called ours detail like that. But it needs to do a typecast here. We're going to say as question mark detail view controller. Otherwise, we'll get back a regular UI view controller, which is not useful to us. Open brace for the condition. We'll say VC dot selected image. There's our property equals pictures index path dot row. This sets a property to whatever was chosen in the table. And finally, we'll call navigation controller question mark dot push view controller VC animated true and that shows the screen now let's look at the if let line a little bit more closely there are three parts of it that might fail first this storyboard might be present or might be nil in which case the question mark the optional chaining will stop the rest of the line from executing second this call to instantiate view controller with identifier that might fail if it asks for something called, say, uh, detail uh, D, 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 that does not exist, so it will fail. And finally, this typecast, the as question mark detail view controller, that might fail. We might receive back a view controller of a different type. So three things in that one line have the potential to fail. If you followed all my steps correctly, of course, they won't fail, but they have the potential to fail. And that's where if let is clever. If any of those things return nil, i.e. if they fail, then the code inside the braces, these two here, won't execute. This guarantees your program's in a safe state before any action's taken. There's only one small thing left to do before you can look at the results. We need to make the image actually load into the image view in Detail View Controller. This new code will draw on a new data type called UI image. This doesn't have view in its name like UI image view does. So it's not something that's actually visible to users. Instead, UI image is the data type you'll use to load image data like pings or JPEGs. When you create a UI image, it takes a parameter called named that lets you specify the name of the image to load. UI image then looks for this file name in your apps bundle and loads it. If we pass to it the selected image property, which we're setting right here, this will load the image that was selected by the user. However, we can't use selected image directly. If you remember, we made it an optional right here. This thing is an optional string. And so Swift won't let us use it without checking them first. This is another place we can use if let. We can check that selected image has a value and if so, put out for usage. Otherwise, do nothing. So inside you did load, after the call to super dot view to load, we'll write this. If let image to load equals selected image, image view dot image equals UI image, then the named initializer image to load. So this first line here, this is what checks and unwraps the optional in selected image. If for some reason selected image is nil, which it never should be in theory, then the image view to image line inside will never be executed. If it does have a value, it'll be placed inside image to load, then passed the UI image and loaded. Okay, that's it. Go ahead and press play or press command R now to run the app and try it out. All being well, you should see the same table view for the picture names. And when you choose one, it should slide in with a picture in the detail view controller. Notice we have this lovely back button here in the navigation bar. Let's go back to the first view controller. And if you click and drag carefully, you can actually swipe backwards with a gesture. Click at the very edge of the screen and swipe left to right, just you would do with your thumb on a phone. 